introduce our our speaker, uh, Melody Pena, who is a uh, sculptor and uh, gra and cartoonist. And so I'll take it away. Thank you. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but um, can you pin her, Jim or Bill, so that she's a full size? Yes, I thought I did. Full size. <clears throat> yep. Oh, right. You can all pin your. Uh, you can all pin her so that you can see her as a large face. You guys are having more gin. Um. Okay. Well, I guess I'll start with my career, which is basically the history of Winstone Edition. Um, when I got out of college, there was a stupid little art show in our in the bookstore of the college, and uh, so I I did some. They invited me to do some stuff, so I did some unicorn sketches. <clears throat> and they, the person running the show immediately offered to buy them all from me. So my husband, John, who's off screen here, said, well, hell, we'll just print them and sell them. So we printed a line of prints. Hey, Cadence, can you show the prints? No, not those prints, the ones online. So Cadence will show you the screenshots of the, the print line that we started doing. This um, was Bill, a... can you enable? Screen... Oh, yes, of course, sorry. Okay, go for it. And I'll show you a couple of the prints that we sold. Um, we sold these in the late 70s, I believe. Early 80s. And early 80s. Through, uh, we, we were traveling up and down the West Coast selling these in, um, adding these to uh, co-op stores, which were craft stores that sold things. And we sold, can you scroll through them? There we go. And so we sold tons of these guys through the craft stores and then they stopped selling okay that's it and um get back to the screen you what would you like to see now no the zoom meeting to see what i'm see what i'm looking what oh. i'm doing oh just keep talking so i can watch what just i'm doing talking, do okay <clears throat> um and about 1982 or something or 84 um, we realized we kind of needed a new business, and our friend Mark Hines, who was a ceramist at the time, uh, had wandered in and said, gee, I really am sick of ceramics. You guys want to start a sculpture business? He liked, this, this, this animal is made out of gypsum, which is uh, like plaster. It sets up without being fired. And he says, I'm really sick of firing stuff because, like, the environmental control people were on him and environmental, uh, what do we call them? Anyways, he was making a lot of smoke with his kiln, and they were giving him a lot of trouble. And so he said, I really want to make something that doesn't require firing. So he says, how about we get Melody to make some, some dogs or something? Because at the time, Sandycast was a big company making dogs. And, uh, and I said, well, Sandycast and United Design are already making dogs. I don't want to make dogs. So we tried. Oh, let me get one of the other animals. We started with a, a line of, here, hold that with a line of regular animals. Get the junk out of here. And so this is one of the, some of the original creatures we made that are just regular animals. Get this one, help me. Okay, this guy's heavy. Um, so we did a, I did a line of these guys, regular animals. There's a whole bunch of them. I don't have them all here. Armadillo, see that's it. Um, and these things didn't sell at all. <laughs> we tried selling them, and they kind of piddled along. You know, if you bought a few of them, we showed these at gift shows, and so we sold these wholesale to um, gift stores all over the world. Is what we ended up doing, and uh, they kind of they bought them, and they kind of didn't sell particularly well. And then I did one. You can help me get those guys off. I did one little dragon and that thing sold really really well and like we were just about ready to give up and that that thing started selling and then so mark said well why don't you make a mommy for it so i made the mommy dragon and that sold incredibly well and i don't consider myself an artist i consider myself a giftware manufacturer and so this was all about what would sell in a store what would look good on a shelf in a, in a retail store? <clears throat> and this is, then I made the daddy dragon. And these guys 
really took off and we start we had a company and mark hines was thinking about starting the company we kind of kind of ended up with it he went on to make uh, true art ceramics donna um, says honey you are an artist was that what they said? Uh -huh. <laughs> well i'm a giftware manufacturer because these are designed to sell in gift stores and these were I kind of carefully, carefully designed these to not look like anything else that was for sale. Um, there were very, very few dragons in the giftware market at the time. These were it, really. There was a couple other really schlocky ones. I, no offense to the person who made them, but they were not very good. And uh, these were it for dragons. And that was right when the um, fantasy craze kind of, uh, after the print line, the fantasy craze was still kind of going. And... So we sold a lot of these dragons. Got it? Let me move this one. You know, it'd be nice if someone was standing right here to take these, because they're kind of heavy and I can't. <laughs> anyway, so from then on, we had a company. And we started making all kinds of dragons. And... Dinosaurs. And dinosaurs. Here, take that. Let's see. Oh, Oh yeah, one of the one of the creatures we made. This guy's got a big chip on the back of his head. All of these pieces are, are seconds that I have upstairs here in my office. Um, the Nature Company uh, during the heyday of our company, the Nature Company ordered one Christmas ten thousand of these guys. So we had to come up with ten thousand dinosaurs, and we made ten thousand dinosaurs and shipped them. At the time, we had a crew of when we make these, we had a crew of like sixty people or something. Anyways, we had a big crew of people. And so we made 10,000 dinosaurs and shipped them in time for Christmas to the nature company. So we had a pretty big operation. I think I'll set this one here. And since we made a whole, so now I have a whole line of fantasy animals that we make. The Pegasuses, Pegasaurs. Let's see, put this guy over here. So we've got a mommy and a daddy and a baby Pegasus. And we've got unicorns, of course. We've got a lot of unicorns. Oh, here's another Pegasus. Here's another little Pegasus. I'll show him. He's coming out of an egg. And he's obviously not in scale with this one, you know, because how would that mommy lay that egg? But anyway, it's a cute sculpture. We uh, The wings are made out of pewter, so they don't break. So the, this animal is made out of gypsum, and the wing is pewter, and we glue the wing in and then paint them. Oh, and these guys, these guys also have glass eyes. I don't, you probably can't see that, but the eyes are really nice little glass eyes with little pupils. Let's see, what else can I show? We've got several lines. Because when you, have a, when you sell things in a store, you have to have lines, meaning groups of sculpture that are kind of, this, kind of all fit together. So we had the um, candle lamp line. These are kitties that will all sit around a, a votive candle. And then they kind of cast cat shadows on the wall. They're pretty neat. We sell a lot of these. <laughs> we, I guess we still sell a lot of these. But thank goodness for this piece. Bill Moore says, I get the Pastoral Symphony from Fantasia when I'm doing my head just looking at them. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Well, that those Pegasuses in Fantasia, I mean, since I was a little kid, those were what I was thinking. Um, and so we have, since, since those original dragons, I was branching out into other kinds of dragons. This is an Asian dragon and he comes, they come in pairs because Asian, our Asian yeah. people told, told me that Asian dragons have to come in pairs. So there's a male and a female. Let's set them here. And this is called, which one's the moon dragon? This is the moon dragon and this is the sun dragon. I should probably go into how these things are made. Let's have, let's see, what have I got here I can show you. Okay, this is a good one because it's got a spike in its tail. Okay, to make these, this guy has a nice missing head because it falls off. Um, I start with a, sculpt, a sculpture, and it can be of any material. I, this one happens to be Sculpey, but I use just about everything. So I make a little guy like this that's 
pretty close to the final shape I want. Then our mold maker will replicate it in gypsum, which is the same stuff these final ones are made out of. And this I carve, carefully carve each little line, each little scale, polish, sand, and make it perfect. And then we cast, this could be several generations of pieces. I could do them, we could cast them again and again and again until I get them perfect. Um, and because each one is made in a mold, we can tell when the mold rips or doesn't work or something, and then I change it. And then this is a test paint. These are, I just did these, uh, like, I don't know, this, this is the most recent piece. This is a little little um, animal, what is this animal called? A key lin. A key lin, which is kind of like a kirin, but it's got two horns. I don't know if I can get closer to this camera. See his little face. Anyway, he has a lot of detail on him. And from there, we will make a production mold. Let's see, let me see the mold. This one? Yeah, this is a... This is a little casting. And this is what the molds look like. Let me get this guy apart. Jeez. These are poured... The liquid is poured into these into these rubber molds. And this is a support to hold the mold in place because the mold is so floppy. It's just like this rubbery glove and it comes off in one piece. You kind of turn it inside out and get the little guy out. And they, like I said, these aren't ceramics so they set up by themselves chemically. You don't have to put it back I don't have to put it back together. Let's set it over here. And you can have that. And we recently did a. You guys ever you guys ever do kickstarters? I can't I can't see your answer because you're not talking. But um, we've done kickstarters for these guys, that particular piece. And what I do is paint them all differently. Where's the other third one? So I probably painted maybe 300 of these guys for the kickstarter we did. And <laughs> Kickstarters, let me tell you, they're, they're, they're really a lot of work. But what we did was uh, I had uh, hundreds of these things, and people could choose the one they wanted. And so they had to email me which one they wanted. And everybody wanted the same one. So I had to say, OK, you guys need to either choose a second, a second choice. And finally, what I ended up doing was just duplicating the paint scheme that everybody wanted. Everybody wanted something. All, I must have made, you know, 12 of these and a few of these and a few of these. Um, I ended up making hundreds of these things, hundreds and hundreds of these things. And made a lot of money on that Kickstarter, too. Um, but the Kickstarter I did, hey, Cadence, can you show the... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to queue up a, a video I did of the, um, the comic. I, I actually do do a comic, and this was called The Veligent. And uh, this is a this is a a video of the Kickstarter video I put up of the basic story. And the animals are often the same animals that we have in the the Winstone line. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, yeah, run it. And, and you guys, if this turn sounds if this sounds terrible, just turn your volume down. Yeah, there you go, because it's kind of loud. <laughs> So <laughs> that was a, kind of a synopsis of the comic. And then for the Kickstarter, or later, I made these. I have a lot of the animals from the comic that are part of the Windstone line. So this is that black uh, horned wolf thing. And you saw the winged meerkats. And this is the uh, one of the winged lions. So we sell these characters from the comic in our, in our Windstone line, too. Not through stores. We sell these through our website. Um, we don't 
sell through gift stores so much anymore since what was it the 2008 crash right yeah all the gift stores went out of business basically and so we we switched to totally online sales directly to customers and so now we sell all of our products through just about all of our products through our website here do something with that and uh and also on ebay we sell ebay things you want to queue up the, the slides of the eBay pictures? There's only a couple of them. We do. I did some special things for uh, for eBay. They're usually fancier. Let's see eBay here. Okay, show that one. So we sell. I, I painted it up really special ones, and we sold these on eBay. And we still sell a lot of pieces on eBay, although I don't paint them anymore. We have a fantastic painter that does them now, Gina. Um, show the next one. But eBay is a good place to advertise. Um, get paid to advertise. We get paid to advertise. Because <laughs> people pay a lot of money for these things. And plus they get seen by a lot of people. Um, Can you on, tell them how expensive they are on eBay? I'm not going to tell them how expensive they are on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they go for a lot of money on eBay. It's it's astonishing sometimes. I mean, we sit there and go, oh my God, you see what that one went for? Okay, now we'll move on to Pode's. When I made the the Villagent comic, it had this character. Let's see, do I have a picture of a Pode in there? Oh, that's oh, there's he is holding the Pode. Yeah, I think I have a I have a picture of a Pode somewhere in the in the screen. Oh well. Anyway, a Pode is the main character's little assistant. And she's this little animal, um, kind of has a... Do you want me to show the Let's see, is there a pod files? picture? I think there's a pod. The villagent probably Rip has. Riptangle animals? Riptangle animals. Let's see. Here we go. No, there's a pod. Okay. So the pod is this little character that's... You saw you saw that thing climbing up the, the cage in the video. Um, it's this little animal that's an assistant. A little little guy who helps, who helps the main character. And so I couldn't... I couldn't keep the Pode drawing consistent, so I made this little sculpture to draw from and to keep my Pode drawings fairly consistent. And I showed it online when we got our first computer, which was like 1985 or something. I don't remember when we got our first computer. Anyway, a long time ago. And everybody goes, oh, I want a Pode. And these Podes, people love them. And I, we've made so many Podes. I mean, thousands of Podes. And most of them are ones. I, most of them are ones I hand paint myself. Um, but we've done Kickstarters. If you guys, uh, let's see, we did did these for the uh, Kickstarter. Show us. Uh, up the the pictures of the mandala, the Pode mandalas. Let's see. Pode mandala, Kickstarter Pode, Kickstarter. There we go. Okay. These. Oh. This is one, one batch of the podes I made for the Kickstarter for the Veligent comic that I used to raise money to publish the comic. I we sold thousands of those things. I don't know how many we sold. Um, were all of these hand-painted? Not literally by... thousands, but hundreds and hundreds. Melody, were all of these hand-painted by you in yep, the picture? Yep, hand-painted by me. All of them hand-painted. Show the next slide of, of these guys. These came in two size, two or three sizes. These are the itty-bitty ones. These guys are about as big as a walnut or smaller. And I, I must have paid, painted 500 of these. Um, they were really popular. Anyways, these were rewards for the Kickstarter. and For the comic. For the comic. Yeah, for the comic. I have done two Kickstarters, one for Dragons and one for the, the Veligent comic book. And, uh, oh, my God, that was so much work. Anyway. But it raised a lot of money. But it raised a lot of money. You know how much it raised? It, how much did it raise? It raised, raised over 100000 130,000. 130, well, the, the dragons weren't much worse because we sold a lot afterwards. Yeah. I actually have some of these individuals right here. Oh, and I, we sold some little ones too. They come in all different sizes. Where's my little ones? There's some little tiny ones. <laughs> Anyways, podes. Podes. Podes are big. And these, I, I actually just finished these. Yesterday, or yesterday, Friday, right? I'm just I'm doing a new grab bag edition now. To sell these on our website, we do this thing called grab bag editions, which is a a whole group of the same sculpture, painted individually by me, 
each one different, but kind of usually in a theme. Like these are all autumn leaf pods. I have another. Yeah, okay, there's a ginkgo one. Um, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see those pretty well. Here we go. So these are all painted individually in different leaf motifs, and I've done so far 120 of these. And we will we offer them on our on our retail store online. Uh, boxed, uh, sight unseen. They don't know which one they're going to get. And we sell them all out in a day. And then people get them, and they swap them on our forum, which is uh, winstoneeditions.com. There's a, there's a forum, and people go on the forum, and they, they horse trade. Often people who don't even want the sculpture will, will buy these, because if they get one somebody else wants, they can trade them. For something else they want so it's this whole micro economy it's really interesting and uh, I publish a, a picture of the entire um, the entire class picture show a, a class picture of a uh, grab bag well it's a partial class picture actually let's see should be grab bags yeah, grab bags yeah show that so this is a partial picture of a, a past edition of grab bag items oh that's my clock <laughs> um, I'll, for example, these are these are the baby unicorns. I don't know where he went, but I paint them all different. Oh, there's a cougar. Yeah, I painted the a whole bunch of uh, panthers too, mountain lions. I painted them all different. I had that picture because it was just pretty. Oh, here's a bunch of little pods. Now this is a safari themed group. You see, there's uh, there's honey badgers and there's uh, leopards and there's uh, quaggas and there's uh, chipmunks. Anyways, I paint them like all different kinds of animals. And so people get these, they don't know which one they're going to get. They usually hate the one they get, and then they have to trade it to someone else for the one they want. That's a class picture right there. And people will circle it, circ uh, take it on the, in the Photoshop or something, and circle the one they want and post it on our forum. So if someone gets that one, they know they want it. It's really interesting how this... Put them on eBay and sell them for money. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then they take them and put them on eBay and get twice their money for them. Let's see, what else can I show you? Um, can I show them details of these? Yeah, oh yeah, show them the... These guys have little little creatures in the leaves. They have little butts. They have little butts. Of course they have butts. But they have little little kitties, usually. I don't know how this happened, but everybody wanted <laughs> kitties on them. Here's, here's some example, some Halloween examples of other grab bags I've done. And the dragons. Um, Adrian asks, what are they painted with? Acrylic paint. Um, we, I have a whole airbrush set up, which I guess I didn't have a picture of, but that's another grab bag I did of Halloween themed kitties and they have kitties on the kitties and, and, uh, I can't show you this, but the, the white spots all glow in the dark. So when the lights go out, all their little eyeballs glow and the moon glows. Some of them are done with like fancy car paint, aren't they? Oh yeah. We tried car paint. It faded. Yeah, the, actually, the screenshot picture was one of that well, was painted with color shift paint. paint. Oh yeah, we use color shift paint too. This is color shift. I don't know if you can see how it color shifts. Yeah, I can't really see, but it changes from blue to red. You can barely see it. That's yeah, that's a fancy color shift paint on the yeah, on the blue. Like... Um, but it's all it's all acrylic based. It's all water based. And then they have glass eyes, of course. You can see the glass eyes. And normally we put fancy, we put little pads on the bottom. These haven't had their pads put on them yet. Here's another piece that I'm uh, working on right now. This is uh, things I'm doing right this minute. This is a, uh, <laughs> this animal's a hippogriff. Hippogriffs are, you know, uh, Buckbeak in Harry Potter is a hippogriff, but this one doesn't really look like that. It's, it's a horse head with a, it's got a beak. And my hippogriffs have lion front paws because it's really hard to cast eagle front paws in this material. And also, um, our logo, our logo griffin has lion paws. His name is Snurl. He's on our website. He's our logo. He's got these, these little lion paws out in front. So I wanted this one to look like he was made out of a Snurl griffin. Um, so what's the question from Donna, Chrissy? Um, Donna says, can we also see more pages of your comic? Uh, let's see, pages of the comic. Do I have, I think I have a, I have some pictures of the comic pages. I couldn't really find any good pages to post because they're all, you know, in context and you'd have to read them. And, uh, I did, I, so I chose some pictures that didn't have a lot of, that's just a background image. 
may know about drawing comics. These guys are cartoonists. Um, this is the typical of the background image. Oh, okay, here's a here's one showing the fly-ins. Hey, give me the fly-in. Where's the fly-in? So, th this is what... They can't see that. I know, well, like when you turn it back on, they can see it. Um, this is the fly-in from that that character. His name is Chalice. Donna says, comics are gorgeous out of out of comics. Every page is a work of art. Well, thank you. Y you know how much blood, sweat, and tears go into these things. Um... So that's a page. I originally did the comic in black and white ink, hand. That's real media. And uh, so the the, the style kind of changes. If you go back to that that other picture of the the pretty one, the first one. And then I started moving to digital. And now I don't do any real media anymore. It's really sad. But uh, but this is this was an actual pencil sketch that I did color, but the actual um. You know the artwork. There's no artwork. It's all. Pixel, it's all pixels. It's kind of sad. <laughs> but that, those are the only pictures, real pictures I have of the comic because it just it's just clunky to show pictures of a comic that you can't figure out what's going on. It's all it's all online. Reptangle.com. Actually, yeah, that'll bring up our website. Um, Tune Rob says, how long did it take to draw each page? Forever. Uh, I can I can. Well, while working full-time doing sculpture, I could do one a week. Originally, I was doing two a week, and then I started doing one a week, and now I do about one every two weeks because I'm also working on other projects. I have another book I was trying to do, too. Let's see. Do I have, do I have the C? Oh, Cadence is trying to yeah, find pictures. It? Cadence is trying to find pictures in the comic. I put a link to it in the chat. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Um, let's see, go back and see if you can find, I forget what I was looking for, um, here wait. you want these, here wait. yeah, okay, show that, yeah, another book I'm working on, uh, these are, if you can scroll through them, these are, uh, uh, uh kind of mock-up pages of, uh, another book, I was, that's the same one, of, uh, COA sketches, COA stands for Certificate of Authenticity, and every time I, I had painted one of my little guys and sold them on eBay, they got a little a little letter of authenticity, and I did a sketch on them. And people collected these, of course, and they've been asking me if they could, they, they like to see each other's sketches. They asked me if I could put a book together of them, and I said, oh, sure, I'll do that. Oh, my God, I must have over 4,000 of these little sketches. I know a, an animator would laugh at me for complaining, but... Um, so many, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of these sketches in our files. And so I've been trying to go through and scan all of these sketches to put them together into a book. Anyway, that's another project I'm working on, so I can't get out t a page a week of the comic anymore. I mean, ugh, comics. I had no idea they were so hard to do. <laughs> you want to do Q&A? Oh, you want to do questions? And Okay, well, we're a little early, I think. Uh, Get another 10. Yeah, okay. Question you should, time. You should show some of your cartoons. Oh, the cartoons. Show, show them my cartoons. I do gag cartoons, too, just for fun. Yeah, what else have I got in that, uh, in that collection of slides? Thousands of cartoons. Oh, thousands and thousands. Oh, i got to give a shout-out. After this, i got to give a shout-out to uh, a friend who's I'm doing something with. <laughs> <laughs> Scroll through. <laughs> Anyways, I do these I do these gag cartoons, but I just post them on Facebook or in my DeviantArt account. Oh, I drew this one on January sixth. <laughs> okay, and then I I really wanted to calm down and not do details, so I started doing this comic, which I call Fumes, and it's just this little extremely. Um, minimalist comic that I do when the when the mood strikes. It's weird, but those kind of things can be end up end up being hugely successful. People and love they're those much weird better. They're, I, I agree. They're much better than a lot of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, that's 
think that's all the ones I had. Those are all the ones I could find. I don't know where they are. They're on Facebook somewhere. No. Um, okay, go to um, the Zuli Challenge. This is something uh, Karen Gilmore and I started. And uh, it, it was originally an animal a day during the month of July. So it was called Zo Zuli. And so we, we are challenged, we challenge each other and everyone else who wants to participate with a different animal a day during the month of July. And it forces one to draw something other than horses and cats all the time. And so it's, it's fantastic. Uh, it's on Facebook. It's called Zulai. It actually, is, um, Zulai Weekly is what's going on now. So once a week, we're supposed to draw. That's a, that's a pineapple, a sea pineapple. I would never in my life draw a sea pineapple if it wasn't for this challenge. And once in a while, I, I take it seriously and realize it's an animal I really want to learn about. So one of the challenges was a moose. So I, I really worked out some um, moose anatomy. Because I have never figured out what goes what goes on on their their noses. They got this big bump on their noses, and apparently it's this big lump of cartilage with muscles attached. I had no idea. Anyway, Ready, try. Uh, drawing of my lamb, uh, tree kangaroos. I mean, how many people need to draw tree kangaroo, kangaroos if not for this challenge? Huh? Anyway, so uh, once once a week during the year and once a day during the month of Z July, we draw crazy animals. I think Roberta Gregory was uh, participating in this. Uh, let's see what else we got to show. Uh, you have your Euclid up there, do you? No, I there didn't. was a question about what art school you went to. Did you go to art school or are you self I, I, I graduated with a three-dimensional art degree. I learned nothing in college. I, I didn't even go back and get my, my diploma because I said, this is bullshit. <laughs> so that's what I took in college. Northridge University. Oh, what's, oh that's a chicken. Four-legged chicken. Four-legged chicken. Uh, these are just random pictures that I stuck in our file. Okay. Um, anything else I haven't shown there? Rooting. Let's see. Oh, here's the co the covers of my two books. Okay, this is the Velagent cover, and this is the Rude cover. Rude is the second comic that I'm working on, and uh, I don't know when I'm going to be finished with it, but I'll ha I'll have to do another Kickstarter for it. A new mess. A new mess. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I guess, let's see. We got anything else to show here? Oh, what other? Uh, okay, yeah, hand me that one. <laughs> I knew when Melody showed up, we would get an embarrassment of riches. I've got a whole table of stuff here. I don't want to just overload everybody. <laughs> oh, but this one's worth it. I mean, it doesn't. We're <laughs> having so much fun. This is gorgeous. <laughs> Stand up next to it, Melody, so they can see the scale. Well, it's, it's... Well, they can see. Yeah. It's big. Ooh. It's big. This is like going to an art show. <laughs> tell, you want to tell them about this one? What's to tell? We we decided to make a big dragon. Actually, I, I can't take total credit for this one. My assistant and I both worked on this one. Um, I, what I would do is sculpt the thing and, and then indicate the pattern. And that poor girl would have to... <laughs> <laughs> I did the I did the front, and she she sculpted the entire back scales, put in all the back scales. Sculpted so, painted. Uh, sculpted. Oh. She car helped carve the back scales. It was all smooth and nice, and I carved out the front scales, and then she, and then drew them on the back with pencil. And uh, this one's actually not a good piece. It's got a squash. That's why it's up here. It's got a squash thing here it's like on its wing. Um, and she she would carve out. The, the other side, which is the hard part, because you have to make it match the front side. It's easy to do the front side, but to make the back side match is really hard. That was Day, my assistant. And it's called the Secret Keeper. The Secret Keeper, because she holds secrets in her paw. And her, if you can see her face, she knows what your secrets are. <laughs> so this one weighs 32 pounds, and Cadence is going to lift it. There we go. Just put that somewhere else. We also, also, one more thing I want to talk about. We have a paint your own line. I don't have a blank one, but this is one I just finished. It's a kitty. Let me turn the computer down so you can see it. Paint your own line. That's not a paint your own. It is. No, it isn't. Oh, I'm sorry. It's hard to tell them apart. But our customers wanted to uh, want to paint these things. They, they'd want to take one of the dragons and repaint it or paint it. So to 
give them an outlet for this, I made a line of pieces that are kind of hand sized. They're smaller. Um, that are intent that are sold unpainted, and they can paint them themselves. And I was really skeptical about this. I thought, oh my God, this is going to be a mess. You should see the paint jobs these people put on these things. They're just astronomical. This is one painted by so by someone, one of our forum members, Sarah Hoare. That's her. I get her name right. Yeah, Sarah Hoare. We do a we do a on the forum we do a a, a swap a paint your own swap about four times a year, and everybody can gets a blind swap, and my request was a realistic chicken, and so Sarah painted this one for me. I just love mm, it. Gorgeous. Blue, a blue laced Wyandotte. Mm. And uh, so these are other pieces that are. I painted these. I have to test paint them to make sure they work. That's a uh, hippocampus, and this is a katsuni. Sunni fox with nine tails, rooster, and then I just did the kitty. Where's the other kitty? Anyway, there's a matching cat for this one. Is there a? No, nah, it's not that cat. Anyways, there's another little kitty that sits here, and so people paint these like memorial cats. So they paint Aww. them like cats of the past. Aww. They post pictures of their cat, and they post pictures of their painted cat. It's really sweet. So that's the paint your own line. What else have I missed? Oh, the pebble line. Anyways, <laughs> I was talking about lines. Okay. I decided, I decided to make try making animals that were not highly detailed, just to be different. And so I made this line of animals that are very smooth. So we got the cougar and a little pebble kitty and a horse. Let's see. And I, I have a whole line of foxes. This is the only one I have here. So these, these are, resemble ceramic. They really look like ceramic. Anyways, I love these. They don't sell particularly well, but I love them anyway. Oh, here's, here's one that I did as a grab bag. And, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> it's a little strange. And here's a wizard cat. We've got... <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't have examples of every piece we do here, but we've got a huge line of pieces. Uh, we did a, we found out wizards sold really well, and I had human, I have human wizards, which Roberta were, Gregory has a cat named Rue, and if that isn't Rue in a wizard costume. It's like a on its nose or something. Yeah, I've seen pictures of Rue. Yeah. I follow her on Facebook. So there's a cat. Oh, there's a wizard. That's a terrible wizard, but we can show that one. That's a good example of something you can do wrong. Oh, I should show the examples of things you can do wrong, but I don't think we have time. <laughs> so we <laughs> mistakes, mistakes made. I tried. That's to up to Bill how long you want to go or how long the audience wants to go. I don't know how much time it's they time, have. It's time for questions, but uh, I can give one uh, one example of things you can do wrong. His cape's too short. And he didn't sell because this cape is too short. Our other wizard sold like crazy. And so I did this one as a limited edition and uh, these didn't sell. <laughs> so we were stuck with, we we're stuck with a bunch of these. Oh boy. And because we, um, we have a forum and I'm on, also on Facebook. There's a Facebook uh, Winstone fan group and I get constant unending feedback on everything I do, what people like, what they don't like. And so I'm, I've learned to kind of um, design my things to fit what they want. And it, it's made me avoid doing things that are terrible. <laughs> it's really nice. In the old days, I had no, I had, when we were selling to wholesale stores, I had no clue what people, I didn't know anybody collected these. I didn't know anybody wanted them. I, you know, the stores would order them, but that's all I heard. And so getting this constant live feedback on your art or whatever you call this stuff, is, is it's really amazing. It's an amazing world we live in now. Well, um, it's like I tell people whenever, you know, somebody comes on and says, you spelled that wrong. Oh, I love that. Like free proofreading. I get free proofreading. I post all my comic pages on DeviantArt first. Yeah. And I've got a couple of people that just pick it apart. There's a comma behind that word. There should not be a comma there. And and uh, I don't know who's talking. I don't know who's talking. So I change the page. The next day, I'll post the page fixed. 
and uh, they really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they get offended, and I have to like decide if I'm going to fix it or not. I think about it a little. I usually fix it. My comic is very, um, very all all ages. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes a word will be taken out of context, and it'll be weird. And I said, oh, should I fix that? And I usually mm -hmm. do. I'm such a wuss. <laughs> So but it is amazing how much help that is with people coming on and noting your stuff because I can't spell. I am the world's it is worst free. speller. Well, I have an automatic typing program to type my, my font into the comic. And of course, typos okay. happen when you get your fingers going. And it'll be, you know, I'll screw up all kinds of things constantly. And thanks to them, I get it fixed before I print. This book, my, my book, I have one printed book. It has no mistake. Oh, one mistake. It has one mistake. There's one word cut off on the very back page that gets into the gutter, but there's not a mistake in this book. I am just amazed. I don't know how that happened. Oh, I know how that happened. Griffin, Griffin proofread the whole thing and typeset. So I'm very pleased with our first book, our first edition. Um, we printed them with uh, uh, Print Ninja. I got them printed, mm. so I got a... A thousand copies of those. We only sold half of them, but that's plenty for the rest of my life. I got a stack of them here. So, you guys got any questions? It's almost time to wrap up here. I'm. I just say the reason I knew that having you on here is so many people. We've had you know guest speakers and things going. What do I do with my life now that we have a new digital world? What do we do, you know, when this is failing for me? And I thought, well, Melody is somebody who just said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to make it work. Well, it's not like and we you're like a steamroller. Nothing stops you. So you, you, uh, one more picture I want to show you this. Uh, show the picture of the shop. I took a picture out of my upstairs window of our work or factory floor. Mm -hmm. And you can see, I think it's right there. OK, this is this is our factory. Oh my God, you know what that is? That's the end of- uh, Of uh, uh, Traitors of the Lost Ark. It, well, it's also the end of the Orwell movie, um, Xanadu. Yeah. <laughs> Citizen Kane. Well, the oh, thing really? is, you're not, you're not just a single artist. You are also an employer and you are creating a whole employment situation here. Yeah, we, well, I could get into that, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's not like, I keep, I keep saying it's not me. I do the sculpture. I do some of the painting. Uh, we've got a crew. I mean, I didn't box all these things. <laughs> we our, our boxers did that. And Susie ships. Oh, this is also a family business. I don't think I mentioned that, but we are all like probably pretty inbred around here. But you're doing the designing. You've got this to get the whole sculpture. process started. And I mean, you could have shippers, you could have painters or whatever, but without a central creative mind, uh, there's nothing. We'd be out of business. You'd be but, out of business. So when you say you're not an business. artist, you are one. in in so many ways. If we didn't have great painters to help and shippers and packers and casters and mold that makers. simply means that you're an intelligent artist who understands you need other people. You don't have to do it alone. And you're That's like right. one of the best examples I know of. I forgot to give credit to my husband John, who set up all the machinery and equipment and designed the casting process and figured out how to do this because I certainly couldn't. Well, uh, the other thing is about everything you do is there's so much great joy in it. This is somebody, you obviously are enjoying what you're doing. It's like, I'm gonna do something that I love and you're the best example of love makes it happen. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, that's kind of the point of my comic. Um, you know, I went into a, a comic shop for the first time when my son was about six because we were looking for Pokemon cards and I was looking around at this art. I go, oh my God, this art is fantastic. I'd never been in a comic shop before. There were, I couldn't find any by females. I couldn't find any comics by females and I couldn't find anything I wanted to buy because it was all gross. It was, it was like gorgeous art, but it was like blood and boobs and knives and muscles and horror. And I did not like that. I didn't like the subject matter. I loved the art. So I said, well, okay, I'm going to do a comic that's joyful. And that's what my comic is. It's just, it's happy. It's not, you know, awful. And I thought, well, this will be different. <laughs> and also, that's how I found you, Donna. And I found Roberta Gregory. And I found Carla Speed McNeil. Because when we got our first computer, I said, there's got to be other female artists, other female um, graphic novelists out there. There's got to be. And so I, I Googled female graphic novelists. And I found you three. And I said, oh, they exist. 
<laughs> we're like the queen witches of this whole situation. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> That's you, right. We would. I tell you, someplace you should show up if they ever get conventions going again is Geek Girl Con. What is it called? Geek Girl Con. Geek Girl Con. You would. You would so fit in. I'm <laughs> good. I'm glad I'd fit in somewhere. They'd go nuts over your stuff. Yeah. Uh, we never did cons. I, I was invited to be the guest speaker at a con and, and just when COVID hit, so. Yeah. Like, that was the end of well, that. Well, this is, this is um, like I say, uh, Bill was going, we're running out of speakers. And I say, ha ha, let me loose on this. And <laughs> so I have watched all these amazing artists and I'm going to one by one get them all in here and have talks and then Bill's recording it and we throw it up on YouTube and we'll have this all this one it'd be like a steady convention with with Cartoonist Northwest and these amazing well, I'll, panels. I'll be watching. I have well, a question. Yeah. Um I'm wondering what you make your first prototype out of. Is it uh, you it's, know when you sculpt your original what do you make that out of? All sorts of stuff. Uh, for example, well, I use Sculpey. Let me get some. Hey, can you, let's see. I'll show you them to you. That's a, that's Sculpey. Ah. Oh, Sculpey. Sculpey. Wonderful stuff. That's not a Sculpey. Mm-hmm. That's um, a different type of clay called mm -hmm. Okay, and then this is a different, this is a polymer clay. This is another type of polymer clay. Here's a water-based one. Here's a, mm, this is a, this is an oil-based one. A what base? Oil based, it's like oil a, based. You know, it's it, actually this is monster clay. Watch your ears. <laughs> oh well, this isn't exactly finished. Here's a um, horsey. It's made out that's, of. Um, that's wed. No, this is critter clay. Oh. This is a water based air drying clay. Anyways, I make them out of absolutely everything. We can't cast this because it's got the long legs. But I had it. Anyways, I use anything, absolutely anything I can find. Because it doesn't matter. Our um, our mold maker will replicate them in gypsum, and then I work from gypsum. Mm -hmm. So the original the original creature doesn't really it doesn't matter what it's made out of. Okay. Uh, I still have not found the after thirty seven years of doing this. I still have no idea what material is best. I hate them all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is good. Nothing works. So I just do the best I can. I've used uh, Sculpey in mold making, and then I made a mold of that out of uh, it's some kind of a very fine cement, and I make more out of that. So, what do you make the replicas out of? I, uh, it's a cement. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, the replicas are made out of cement. Yes. Huh. Might yeah. Like af after I make the mold, I make a a rubber mold or a cover it. Yeah, I make a rubber mold actually. Where's a cement? We, we did a cement line for a while. What happened to our cement? Well, by cement, she might be talking about gypsum. Yeah, probably talking about gypsum. Then what are your actual um, items made out of? It's gypsum. A gypsum. Hard plaster. Yeah, it's a really, really dense, hard plaster. So that's similar to the cement I use, I guess. Well, cement is a little different, but similar, well, basically. You put a port in a mold as a liquid, and it eventually sets up. It, it has right. a different chemical process. We did a cement line too. Where's a cement one? Ah, oh, they're too far away. Yeah, I can't grab them. They're heavy. <laughs> grab a. See if you can find a, the small one somewhere. I don't know. We did a cement line too, because I I love outdoor cement sculptures like those big lawn deers and stuff. And so I said I want to do those. So we had we had spare room in our old business in when we were in North Hollywood, and so we made some cement stuff. This one's not cement, but that was one that was intended for it, right? It was cement, I think. It is. I don't know. Oh, Maybe it's so I think it's cement. Down. Anyway, this was. This was a cement piece. Wow. Let me see if I can. So this guy would sit out in the yard and scare the gardeners. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I found after going through all the trouble Ooh. of making these out of real cement, out of real cement, which was it took a lot of time to set up. It wasn't the same as gypsum. It took weeks to set up. So we had to have a lot of space to let these things cure. Um, everybody just kept them inside anyway. And plus, they were just extra heavy to ship, so we just stopped doing it. We ran out of space um, when we moved to Oregon. Do you want to show me? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Okay, before <laughs> before uh, before Winston. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> No, that was after Wednesday. Oh wow! Oh my God! This was for the, uh, eyes. This was this was for ceram the ceramic show I did. But this one's not. This one is a casting of a ceramic piece I did. Oh my God! Uh, yeah, I did I did a ceramic show and I did these a lot of pieces for it. Um, this one blew up in the kiln, but we made a mold of it before it blew up. So <laughs> this was supposed to be an outdoor sculpture too for a, like. It's like a book title, The Exploding Dodo. Yeah, oh, it blew to pieces. I was really mad. Oh. I have to share a behind the scenes. Um, some of the casters knew she was going to do this, and they begged me to make her show the dodo. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's why we're showing the dodo. Yeah, I well, love the dodo. Okay, there's stuff like, there's stuff like that all over back here. I'm not going to keep you guys forever. You should film a day at the at the uh, at the studio because it looks like it would be a hoot. Uh, yeah, probably. That, that would be Cadence's job. <laughs> yeah, we, we decided we want to do a documentary. A documentary? Yeah. Wait, <laughs> <Oy vey. laughs> You can sell it to PBS, the American Experience. My lady, can I ask you? Um, uh, um, just did you were you rooted already like in before you went to art school did you um, were your interests kind of aligned with more the mythological or the um, fantastical um, or was that something that kind of grew as your business grew um, it, just curious about that very much, very much something I always did yeah in fact the comic I've been doing the comics since I was 14 so um, yeah it's it's come it's old and it's getting old. But it's not mythical. It's kind of timeless. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, there's unicorns. And... Well, I mean the origin of it. You just did it weird, didn't you? Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> Let's see. Unicorn. Unicorn. Gorgeous. You had to glue that horn on separately, true? It's pewter. So we cast the, we cast the pewter horns. A lot of our pieces have pewter horns, so we we cast them, rotor cast them separately, and stick them on. Extra trouble. Or just. And I'll show the rest of the pieces. We do a line of wall sconces. This guy won't stand up, I don't think. Oh, maybe he will. Uh -huh. These are wall sconces that have a candle in them, and the light shines through their eyes and looks spooky. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. You have a question. Yeah. What's what, your question? Which piece is the closest to what you would do if you to make money? Ooh, that's, that's a good question. question. If I didn't have to, well, as if we make money. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to sell anything. What, what would it, what's an example of something that is? Well, the podes. I definitely do the podes. Well, where's the piece? I, I do a video piece for myself. Okay. And it doesn't sell, so it's truly a piece for myself. <laughs> okay, here's a piece I did for entirely for myself. It's a guinea pig. Because I love guinea pigs. I think they're beautiful. Very nice. But you know what? I'd, I'd, I'd probably do real animals. Because I just really am into anatomy. and. Well, yeah. I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of pet animals. Obviously. <laughs> I've had guinea pigs. Look at that face. Um, yeah, I've had llamas. Oh, can you guys grab the hatching llama that's back there? That's another right, right, right on that big egg. Down, cold, cold, warm, left, down, back, left, back. There, I think his ears might have fallen out. Bigger than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. While while they're queuing that up, I just want to show you guys that she says she's a gift shop maker, but if you leave anything around, she'll turn it into art. Oh. She's out of control. We can't stop her. <laughs> <laughs> These, this is all foil. Yeah, I make aluminum foil animals. I've always made I've always made aluminum foil animals since I've been watching her for years on YouTube and just, and uh, on Facebook and just watched her. You know, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. It's not just 
falls out all over the place. Here's another piece I made for myself. And it's eyes seem to have fallen out. I'm sorry. They really, they usually have glass eyes. Hatching llama. Um, this is another mistake. We couldn't cast the egg. Even though people really liked this piece, uh, we couldn't cast it because the egg would go bloop and lose its egg shape. So that's another one of our mistakes. Also, it's too big. The llama couldn't lay an egg that big. Melody, do your, do your customers tend to have a particular profile or do, are they all kind of all over the place? They have a particular profile. They're usually female. Mm -hmm. um, mostly unmarried women. Mostly unmarried women. Right now on social media, uh, most uh, the largest demographic is in the millennial age range. So we have, it seems like that's who's more present with us, at least on social media right now. Yeah, we actually took a, took a survey of our customers just to, because we had no idea who was buying these. And so we got pretty, some pretty good demographics on, on oh, what, the did a yeah, the, the, actually the um, OSU. OSU University did a class on us. So studying. Well, there's an ongoing thing uh, on social media where a lot of women are going, I don't want a man and kids. Leave me alone. Yeah, I want wisdom. So, that's, what's that? I want sculptures. I want sculptures. I want, you know, leave me alone. I don't want those stuff. You know, leave. Now that we don't have to or starve, uh, a lot of women are going, so I, that, that's not what I want in my life. I want to go do this. And so you've got a demographic out there for sure. And it doesn't have to be ashamed of itself. Yeah, and our only problem is trying to find them all. We used to have retail stores. We had, what, 2,000 re 2, retail stores all over the world selling our product. And they all, like most of them, just went belly up during the recession. And everybody thinks we went out of business. And so they don't know how to find us anymore. And so now we're, our whole marketing thing is trying to find them, our old customers. Well, do you know that those virtual those virtual uh, conventions, the cons you said you didn't go to, the virtual conventions have got virtual dealers rooms, and your stuff would go like hotcakes. Hmm. V cons happening, Emerald. Well, Emerald City is trying to be live, but I'm not saying one <laughs> about that. But there's more and uh, San Diego Comic Con more and more is just doing it virtually, including dealers rooms. So gotta be just, just a madhouse. I mean, how could anyone find anyone there? Uh, believe me, we do. We know what we're doing. Wow. Um, but at the conventions, if you look at these conventions, um, well, they're 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 trade shows. They are trade shows, and people are going. And your stuff at any kind of science fiction convention, at a comic book convention, you they would just fly off the show. Yeah, if we could, uh, being there live makes a big difference. But yeah, it that does. was an alt alternative. Well, think of it as being like the gift shops. You can't be there. Somebody else is moving your stuff. So instead, take advantage of the conventions. And there are thousands of them all over the world. That's uh, they love your stuff. They go, okay, NorwestCon would go crazy. I know DragonCon. We have a rep at DragonCon usually. DragonCon, NorwestCon. You know, there, there are thousands of these conventions. And the weird thing is the science fiction people, for some reason, do not believe their stuff will sell at a Comic-Con. The secret about a Comic-Con is basically if, if, if it's pretty or they can eat it, you can sell it. <laughs> you just get there buy your space, put your stuff up, and you will find customers. Because a Comic Con just says, they don't judge you. They don't, they don't say like, oh, you can't be in here because you're not doing a specific kind of genre. What a Comic Con says, uh, oh, you want a table? Well, buy a table, get in here. Yeah, sell your teacups, fine. Yeah, sell your teacups, sell your, your, you know, your crazy velvet fezzes, whatever you want. Yes, there is somebody who sells crazy velvet fezzes. And whatever else you want, if it's pretty or you can eat it, just go sell it. And they, they will accept, that's why they get so big. Because they don't turn anybody away because they're the wrong genre. Mm. I could do that virtually. I, if you can um, do it virtually, it'd be awesome. I also, I just joined the team to help with uh, digital things. And so um, getting to know our digital audience uh, differently for the first time. Um, the family is very familiar with their forum audience on the website. But there's a lot of people who are hitting all over the the world online who already love Winstone and uh, grew up drooling over pieces 
And every day when I check our social media comments, there are people who are discovering us again for the first time there. And one of the things I notice is anybody who loves anything fantasy or science fiction or is creative loses their mind when they see uh, windstone pieces, even if they're seeing them for the first time. So I'll be helping to uh, hammer that idea home, Donna. <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, right now, Vicon, who said they were going to get with me and tell, you know, so we could set up dealers rooms, blah, 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 blah. They came back and went, oh, my God, we forgot to do that with you. Do you want a, do you want a dealer space? The convention's going on right now, but because it's virtual, they can offer dealer space right now. I can go ahead and send you some of their email contacts and i mean yeah the convention ends sunday but you could all you could already whap in a little dealer space because they're already making plans for 2022 i've been offering to be a moderator because i'm a heck as you've noticed i'm a heck of a moderator and i can help with get right now what i'm trying to do is i should be an agent i need a white wig um i need to talk like this and uh so Right now, people, as they're having conventions, people might say, well, I can't get into that convention, so it's been cut off. Virtual conventions, they can just make space for you. They would go crazy. Very, very interesting. Yeah. And this, I did not know. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really interesting. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm going to, actually, I'm going to go, you go to vcon.com. Vcon just go to vcon. It's vcon. It's a Canadian convention. It's a little convention. They are a joy. Hey, I haven't been there. Huh? Everybody's are out of business in Canada. What's that? All our all our dealers quit carrying our stuff in Canada, and uh, everybody thinks we've just gone out of business because that's what well. The, the conventions are all over Canada, and VCon is a is a lovely little convention. And then you get a hookup with all the rest of them. It's a science fiction fantasy convention, and I have no doubt at all your customers are going to it. Go to vcon.com and say, hey, Donna Barr sent me. Can I get some space for, you know, a couple of days and we can get a plan for next year? Because it's probably going to be virtual from now on. Wow. Okay. That's perfect for me because I hate groups of people. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, everybody? Go to vcon. See what they're doing. Wow. I will type that in. Oh, I want to give one, one shout out to someone. Um you guys ever do Kickstarters? Ever try doing Kickstarters? Yeah. Um, uh, James Tyler of the Comics Comics Launch Class. It's on Facebook. He 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 has a uh, Comics Launch Kickstarter class that will guarantee you'll have a successful Kickstarter. It costs about plus over $300 for the class, and it's about a six-month class. My God, it, he takes you through every inch of it, and uh, you, you literally cannot fail if you take the class. Uh, uh, what's, what's the name of that? What's um, the name? His name is uh, Tyler James Vogel. I believe that's his name. And the, the, the class is called Comics Launch. He's got uh, several other classes too, but the one I took was Comics Launch. And uh, it's a really hard class <laughs> and it costs a lot of money, but you won't, your Kickstarter will not fail if you take it. Anyways, I wanted to give him a shout out. I have nothing, I have nothing to do with him except that I took his class and it worked for us. Uh, Tyler James, oh, his name is Tyler James. Comics there it is. Tyler, uh, comicslaunch.com. Yeah, I guess his, his name is Tyler James. Anyway, I wanted to give him a shout out for helping me have two successful Kickstarters. Wow. So is that it, folks? Is everybody happy? Oh, yes. Very nice. Wonderful. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. For, thank you, thank you for coming, awesome. Melody. That was so awesome. That was just great. It was really super.